Welcome to Women of the Word, where we go beyond the surface and getting to know each other and share testimonies about Jesus. I'm Dee Humphrey, and today we're speaking with Cindy Harju. Cindy, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me, Dee. Mm -hmm. Well, over the past week, I read something in a devotional that I found pretty interesting. It said, the moment someone walks into a room, you can sense certain emotions from their presence, whether it's uh, conflict or contentment, jealousy, or even the joy somebody radiates out. And when I read something like this, I thought, I'm going to put that into practice. So the next Sunday, I go to church and I started looking around and immediately saw you, Cindy, and your smile was so contagious, it made me want to smile. I could see the joy, and it reminded me of the scripture found in Nehemiah 8.10, which says the joy of the Lord is our strength. So this right here, I knew right then and there that others needed to get to know you more. So tell us where are you originally from? I'm originally from California. I grew up there with my two older brothers and one younger sister, and we moved to Arkansas in 1973. Aww. And share with us what your life was like growing up. Well, it's hard to believe, but I was a very shy child. I hid behind my mom till I was 17 years of age. But it was a very good um, place to grow up. We had a super neighborhood where we would all get together and play softball, basketball, have water um, balloon fights, and just have a good old time together. But we always knew when the lights came on at night, it was time to go home. So we'd all head to our homes. That was your warning sign, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so did you grow up in church? Yes, I did. My mom was a Sunday school teacher. I don't remember my dad going to church that much because he was a wheeler and a dealer and he loved to be at the swap meets. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so tell us about your relationship with the Lord and when did it first start? Well, when I was probably about 10 years of age, my brothers and I went up uh, to the front of the church and um, got saved. But it really didn't take at that time. Um, but I'm glad I did it because it helped me through some tough times when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. But when I was 15, I remember going to church camp. And that's where it all came um, to a head. And I was um, listening to the pastor. And um, I felt the tug of the Lord on my heart. And so I pulled away from everybody. And went and cried and prayed and asked Jesus into my heart. I became very on fire for the Lord at first, witnessing the people, bringing people to church. And, um, but as time goes on, that fire kind of diminished and there'd be times where I'd get away from the Lord and um, not be so close to him. But I always knew that it, Whenever I got far away, all I had to do was say, okay, Lord, I'm sorry. And he would take me right back. And um, I'm very grateful for that. Mm -hmm. And yes, he does take us right back, doesn't he? So you've been following the Lord for how many years? 46 years. Not all good, but always, I always know that God's there whenever I ask. Mm hmm. Cindy, that is such an incredible testimony right there. 46 years is incredible. So you probably have a life verse. So share with us what that verse is. Yes, my life verse is Philippians 413. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Mm -hmm. And I know when the world overpowers me and I don't feel so good about myself or my abilities, I know all I have to do is call on him and he'll be there to give me the strength to make it through. Absolutely. So that means you must have had some type of like a physical challenge that you endured. Can you share with us what that is and what you have learned from it? 
Yes. Um, November 2017, I broke my ankle and I broke it really bad. Mm -hmm. I had to have two surgeries and I was on my back for four months. <sighs> but luckily, God, as always, took care of me. My daughter, my oldest daughter lives with me and she would take care of me in the morning and evening when she came home from work. But I always had friends and church people who would come at lunchtime and bring me lunch. And I was very grateful for that. And so the first year was okay. But the second year, I started having pain and even more swelling and um, less movement in my foot. So I went back to the doctor and I said, look, I'm, something's wrong. It's not, I'm not able to walk as well as I was. So he took x-rays again. And um, he said, well, everything's where it's supposed to be. So if you keep having pain, come back and see me. Well, I started asking around to other people and I said, is there someplace else I can go and get a second opinion? And so people pointed me to Galena, Kansas. So I went up there and um, saw the doctor and he was really surprised that I was walking as well as I was. He says, well, what's your pain level? I said, most days it's a one to three. And he looked shocked. He said, I would have suspected at least a 10 and you walking with a cane or struggling to walk. And I said, why? And he goes, well, you're walking bone on bone. Mm -hmm. He goes, you're a great candidate for an ankle replacement. And I said, I've never heard of an ankle replacement. He goes, well, not very many people do it. Mm -hmm. I said, well, how long would I be down? He goes, you'll be down for uh, probably three weeks. So um, I said, well, I can't do it now because my dad's going through colon cancer and I've got to be able to take him to doctor's appointments and stuff. So I said, I guess we'll have to wait until summertime and I'll be out of school then too. And he goes, okay, I'll see you in six months. So um, I left and of course COVID came around. I'm going, oh, great. Now what am I going to do? I got to have my surgery at least by the 10th of June so I could start back to work normal time. So I would pray and I was getting a little anxious and um, worried that maybe it wasn't going to happen. And um, I would call and ask them, am I still on your list? Yes, you're still on the list. So finally, um, a month before I had to go and have a um, CT scan so they could make the um, 3D printing of the shape of my bones so they could get the bone, the cadaver bone to fit my ankle. Mm -hmm. So um, we got the roll, the ball rolling and things started going the way that they were supposed to. Yay. So yeah, so I had to go get a COVID test so I could have my surgery done. And so um, I was so excited and mom took me to Carthage where they had a hospital that didn't accept COVID patients, which I was very thankful for too. Mm -hmm. So went through the surgery, did fine, um, was down for about three weeks. I had a wound that um, had, a, had to have a little bit longer time to heal, but um, it finally healed and I'm walking today and no pain and better than I was three year, three and a half, four years ago. So I'm very grateful and thankful and um, glad that God is my healer. That's right. Praise God. I love that. And, and just knowing that he was your strength during that time. Oh yeah. And, definitely. and the joy that you still had. That's, that's incredible. So yeah. share with us, uh, your career and what it is that you do for a living? Well, I have a double major in business and computers, and I taught 15 years at Shiloh Christian School in Springdale, Arkansas. The, I taught K-4 through 6th grade, and um, now I work at Grove Public Schools as a computer tech, and I love working with the teachers and the students. <laughs> So working in the uh, public school setting, did you ever skip school when you were a kid? Yes, D, I did. <laughs> then tell us, where did you go when you skipped school? 
Well, we were in driver's ed at the time and we were thirsty. So we thought we'd head on over to McDonald's, which was only a couple blocks away from the school. So we're going, driving there, and all of a sudden we stop at a stop sign and we meet the driver's ed teacher coming the other way. And we all hid down in the car and thought, oh, we got away with this one. So we went on to McDonald's and got our drinks and came back. And that night when I got home, my mom was uh, waiting for me with an envelope from the school. And she goes, how'd your day go? And I said, it was good, mom. She goes, I got a letter from the school today. And I went, uh, well, uh, mom, I need to confess something. <laughs> so I probably was as red as can be. And I said, mom, some friends of mine and I went to McDonald's and got a drink during driver's ed today. And she goes, yeah, I knew. And I went, how'd you know? And she goes, well, one of my friends was there and she saw you there and she told me about it. And I went, oh, oh. No. <laughs> was, besides the letter I got from the um, school was only telling me how many days you've missed this year. And I, I already knew that. And I said, mom, I promise I'll never keep anything from you again. <laughs> I love it. I mean, we can't get away with anything because of moms, right? <laughs> Hello, so Cindy, tell us some of your hobbies. What do you like to do? Well, my favorite thing is I love to sing for my Lord. I really miss choir right now. Oh. Um, but I also like to create things, take things that other people might throw away or just plain pieces of wood mm -hmm. and create something beautiful out of it and share it with others. And so I love to craft, I love to garden. And I love to get out and hike in God's country. Oh, yes. I love nature. Me too. Uh, tell us what brings you great joy. What brings me great joy is to make things or and give it to other people or to just lend a smile or, to wor or a word of encouragement. Mm -hmm. You said a word of encouragement. Sorry, it kind of blurped out just a little bit. So... Uh I could see that. I could totally see that in you. So share a, uh, a message or a story with us of God giving you the strength to help someone else. Well, when I taught at Shiloh Christian, there was this boy named James and he was going through some hard times. I could tell by the way he walked down the hall. And um, another teacher and I decided to pull him aside one day and just talk with him and see what's going on. So he was telling us about his hurts and his pain and um, the struggles he'd been going through. And um, so we listened and finally I said, well, James, I just want to share a little story with you about my struggles. Mm -hmm. So I sat and told him about my struggles that I had to go through. And I said, you know, there was a time in my life when I was like you and the Lord spoke with me and he said, you know, you've got to make a choice. Either you're going to let the past rule your future or you're going to let go of the past and move on. And I told him, I said, you know, I had to make that choice and I chose for the future. And so um, I told him, you're going to have to make that choice too. It's not an easy choice, but it's a choice you've got to make. We've all been through hurt and um, struggles in our lives. And so it's a choice. And he looked at me and with amazement and he goes, but Miss Harju, you always walk down the halls with a smile on your face. And I said, yes, James, I do. And that too is a choice. I say, I get up in the morning and I don't always feel like smiling that day, but I know if I put that smile on and I keep it on throughout the day, eventually it's gonna become real. That is so true. And that, I love that story. That is so wonderful, Cindy. And I mean, that's the thing that I noticed in you in church. And you could just see the joy of the Lord just giving you that strength. And so I have enjoyed our time together. Thank you so much for sharing your testimonies and your stories with us. It truly has been wonderful. Well, thank you for having me. I enjoyed it too. 
Mm -hmm. So let us leave you with some encouragement as well found in Romans 15, 13, which says, excuse me, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So what a great reminder this is as we go into this next season of life. So until next time, let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Bye. Bye-bye.